It ain't the best for my region, you gotta utter mine. Think of who really put it on, you never come to mind. Rapping like on Spotify, tap you rappers compromise. Yeah, no need to panic, just paint the canvas. If you can feel the static, you're too close, find your balance. Embed the revolution for they prohibition bandwidth. Blood trickle from the lead to see what's planning. I had them all out before I dialed up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up? Had them all line before I dial up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up? Uh, what at that flight to Amsterdam? When my account went to minus, my family found out too and didn't like it. You're not in the salon with Dale said, and I thought he was biased. Then I got a memo that said copy the finest Before my foolishness settled in Recorded a whole tape before we got to Berlin This close to giving up and now never again Don't overlook the work and come expecting a win In the end, my word, never put nothing over the squad Got it right up under their nose, you're fight a facade Off the cliff of broken wings, I'm aware of the odds Enough faith for us all, I'm the one for the job Most days, catching some rays, baby, look like the front page Overthinking what they might say, have it your way, yeah The biggest threat is something they never seen, dial it up, patch me into the screen. I had them all line before I dial up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up? I had them all line before I dial up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up? Hey, good evening. This is Abdul Shahid Lukman of Coffee, Current Events, and Politics, the most dangerous show on social media. Well, I'm, you done look. I am the co-host, but Jackie will be joining us um, in a little while. So uh, we welcome you tonight for another rendition of our uh, show. Uh, this is actually part two of um, what we started yesterday. Um, a lot of you who were with us yesterday, uh, we went a little long on um, uh, on the subject of. Um, our children being protected and abused, which I thought was a good show. Many of you thought it was a great show too. And so uh, we didn't get a chance to get to um, our subject of the NFL. So here we are. But first, um, I would like to, you know, there's something that's been on my mind. You know, I'm surfing the internet today and, you know, a lot of stuff, um, you know, just really just took me back. But there's one thing outside of, I know a lot of you know about the woman and the gorilla glue and all the other kind of stuff. Yeah. That was something that really took me for a loop. But then there was something else that really got me too. And, um, you know, this, uh, the rapper with the uh, diamond in the middle of his forehead, right? So that really got me. So, you know, this is my take on the whole thing. You know, you remember the movie Idiocracy? You know, the, con the comedy about a future United States in which all the idiots were in charge of everything and the society was in complete chaos? Well, with recent events, it appears that we may be seeing art imitating life. If you think that this is just simply hyperbole, let me introduce you to little Uzi Vert. I know, I know, I know. You don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. It appears that nobody knows who the fuck he is. But he apparently, um, a lot of people know him enough in order for him to have earned $28 million from, I guess, what he would call music to be able to afford a $24 million diamond, which he, wait for it, had embedded into his forehead. Yes, Lil Uzi, Bert, or someone just as stupid as him, thought this was a great idea. In an industry that continues to lower the bar for outrageous antics, to me, this takes the cake. Now, I guess the, fa the facial tattoos and the unintelligible lyrics just weren't enough. He had to transform himself into some monstrosity that you would have seen in a Sinbad movie. But I think also that it is an indictment on what I would see as or call the capitalist mindset, which is often insensitive to the hardships of others. Now, never mind that this egregious display of wealth during a pandemic, which has seen mass unemployment, severe food insecurity, housing insecurity, and record numbers never seen before since the Great Depression is itself, to me, I've seen. Especially since most of the people affected the most by this pandemic are black and brown people, you know, his targeted audience. 
$24 million, folks, could have helped a lot of people in need. Yet, this idiot decides to have it displayed, this diamond displayed in the middle of his forehead. I guess maybe that's what they mean when they say, do not cast your pearls before swine. Now, I know kids today don't like hearing us old folks talk about the good old days. But you know what, kids? Fuck that. It is time that we elders, you know, put your egos aside. And it's the time that we elders take you back to a time when artistic expression didn't involve having your face looking like a map of the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, I said that because apparently um, by Lil Uzi Vert having this diamond embedded in his head, it caused a physical reaction where his whole face swollen up. So, I mean, there you go. Now, kids, there were excesses in our day. I admit, Mr. T, you know, he had all those gold chains. And then, you know, in the golden age of hip hop, a lot of the rappers was, was uh, sporting these thick gold chains that we used to call Dookie Gold at the time. And, you know, the girls, um, Salt and Pepper and all of them, we used to wear the old what uh, big gold earrings. And yeah, we had our successes. But, and let's not forget all the different looks of the rock stars too. But no one received radioactive poisoning from trying to impress their fans. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating. Little Uzi didn't get radiation poisoning from his stunt. But if you ask me, he can be cast in the next edition of the American Horror Story franchise. We're going to be right back. In the meantime, share this video. Um, go to the, uh, to the notifications. And, um, and you know, click like. Y'all know what to do. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, the better half will join me in a few minutes. I had them all down before I dialed up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up. I had them all long before I dial up. How they claiming they on top when I'm a mile up. Uh, I know the wall's closing in, but don't you dare give up now. Hope and leave, then me pull up, do some bucks down. Tied to the valet, pull the truck round. Push the line up that we drew it, it's just us now. Would you believe me if I told you my granny told me she prayed this? They booked the surgery just to pull me out of the basement. Right back where I started, nothing to show for a facelift. Got pushed playing Walter White and Davis, never felt so dangerous. The type of power they can't quantify. And name the best from my region, you got a other mind. Think of who really put it on you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Coffee Current Events and Politics in Mukman Nation. You know, the most dangerous show on social media, bar none. Well, our camera looks a little weird. Let me fix that. Okay, oh. let me fix it. Yes. So while you're fixing that, uh -huh. I mean, look, what do you want me to do to fill the time? I can sing. I sing. Can sing a song. Oh, uh, let me see. Um, <laughs> unforgettable <laughs> in every way. <laughs> but we'd like to thank you all for coming and joining us on um, YouTube and on facebook and i believe on twitter on twitter right, right. We're on twitter too so you know we got all three platforms so you can see um the lovely mrs lukman and there you know, we go and uh the handsome face of yours truly uh-huh you know you know i want to be like stevie you know like i was looking <laughs> at um uh you know i was on twitter and i was looking at stevie wonder's twitter thing right? uh -huh. and stevie you know um you know he's, he's not a man of few words but i tell you one thing um i was watching some of his videos and you know you're famous. You know you're famous when you can say, hi, y'all. It's, it's me. me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah, I want us to get to, like, we're just, we're just, you know, we just pop up on the screen and we're just like, hey, y'all. Right. It's, it's us. us. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just thought that was so cool. I was like, yeah, I mean, of course you're Stevie Wonder. You know? <laughs> Who else would yeah. you be? I mean, you got to be like from another <sighs> planet or, you know, or, or you do not know who Stevie Wonder is. So, yeah, I think that he's one of those ones that can, can really... Um, you know, Michael Jackson, of course, and when he was living, when, yeah. My, Michael could be one that says, um, hi, hi, it's, it's me. me. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, I just thought it was cool that Stevie just like, it's me. You know what I mean? It's me. Yeah. So yes, yes, y'all. It's us. Yes, yes, y'all. To the beat, y'all. Okay, I'm showing my age. But yes, yes, yeah. y'all. It's us. And look, we got to get into this discussion about the NFL. 
that we uh, couldn't, uh, we didn't have time to get into last night um, because it, it it is really, really important. The, the, oh, the hypocrisy and the disconnect. Yeah. It's, it was, it was just wild. Now, just for disclaimer's sake, we didn't watch the Super Bowl. We nope. have not watched the Super Bowl. Abdus has never been a big football fan, um, except for when the Eagles were playing because he's yeah, from, yeah, from, you know, he's from area. the Philadelphia area. Um, and somehow I still married him. I don't know how, but you know, I, I'm, I, I was a huge football fan, oh, huge yeah. football fan. Um, watch college football, pro football, preseason. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, and parents were going to call like, what is this creepy woman sitting up there watching our kids play? <laughs> Driving by, watching Pee Wee football games, cheering for kids. I ain't right, know. Right. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, I, I love football, of course, up until you know what happened the NFL blackballed Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Why come? Because that Negro had the nerve to stand up for other Negroes who were being assaulted by this white supremacist system. So the Super Bowl Sunday, oh, and by the way, the other disclaimer, that weird noise you hear in the background, that's our attempt at distracting Brewski from making a cameo appearance. So right, right. he is um he is laying to waste to his big so, yeah. giant bones. So, so there's nothing wrong with, with, with your audio. There's yeah, there's that. it's just a dog that's trying his best to chew through this heavy plastic bone. <laughs> yeah, there's that there's he's had for a couple of years and he just, you know, he he he, he can't he can't accept the fact that he just can't <laughs> chew through this thing. Yeah, there's not a demon in here. That's yeah. that's Brewski breathing heavy, really getting into his his chewing regimen right now. So anyway, um so we didn't watch the Super Bowl. We heard about uh, the shenanigans, not from the game, but from the pregame, right. from the NFL's attempts at, uh, I don't know, racial oh sensitivity, oh, racial I, 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 inclusivity. Oh, man. Uh, racial diversity. I, 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 you know, it was very it was a very clumsy attempt at um, trying to show the more enlightened side of the NFL, you know, and, and, and the thing of it is, I think um, after they they um, had all of this controversy, I think it started with with um, the uh, um, with the with the guy um, who who was accused of beating his, his uh, girl. Ray Rice a few Ray years Rice. ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why I keep saying Ray Lewis, but <laughs> Ray Rice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole thing, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, feminist women got jobs off of that, you know. But a bunch of white white feminist women. women white women got jobs off of a black woman getting her ass whooped in the um elevator mm -hmm. and um so but then when kaepernick um was doing his protests and now the nfl had to fight the uh, accusations of racism and and all the other things that was coming out at the time then the nfl started you know hey 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 you know, we got to look for some people to you know to start you know bringing us along into the 21st century <laughs> and um and they spent millions of dollars doing that i mean mm -hmm. people were getting paid big salaries and Jackie, look, these big salaries that these people are getting, this is what they this is what they produce. This is exactly what yeah. they produce. And and let, let's be clear on the whole Ray Rice situation. Because we always have to explain this stuff. Listen, according to both of their accounts, they were both wailing on each other. What we saw in the video was what happened, you know, in yeah. the elevator. But Ray Rice's wife came out and said she put her hands on him too. Now we always talk about trust black women, believe black women. That black woman said that she did not want her husband to lose his career, that she supported him, that he made a huge, terrible mistake. He was in counseling therapy, whatever. Nobody listened to the listened to that black woman. No. Nobody listened to her. And and I'm not at all saying that Ray Rice had no uh, that he shouldn't have been punished in some way for what he did. Hell yeah, he should have been punished for what he did. But the same folks who talking about trust black women, listen to black women, didn't listen to her. <laughs> but a whole lot of those same white women who were talking about, oh, we're protecting uh, uh, black women like Ray Rice's wife, who right. they didn't listen to, a whole lot of them got jobs in the NFL's domestic violence awareness office right. or whatever it was they created out of that incident and and, and, and i think um if i may interject i think mm -hmm. there was one black woman who they brought on as a consultant yes i yes, mean yeah she wasn't true. getting the big money they would get no i doubt it. <laughs> so so listen when when we when we bring up these issues we try really hard not to stick to on the surface 
of the issue, the things that, you know, the media talks about, the things that, you know, people on the uh, on, on the periphery of the issue talk about. We try to talk about all of the levels and we're not here to defend or demonize individual people. This, that, that's not the point. So that, that, that is, our, that is the, the, the reason we bring up. <laughs> now our dog is laying on the light. <laughs> the well, we're just hoping that this thing don't fall over. <laughs> Adventures in dog parenting. So, so, um, so here you have an NFL that has always had an image problem when it comes to those kinds of issues, domestic right. violence issues, because Ray Rice wasn't the first player who assaulted his significant other. Exactly. Well, you know, yeah. he, he a, a whole lot of white oh, players right. did that, got slaps on the wrist. Hell, Ben Roethlisberger. How long did we talk about Ben Rapelessberger? Oh my God! I mean, you know, I mean, and and even even um uh, uh uh even he said after at the end of this season when they asked him was he coming back to the Steelers, mm -hmm. he even said if they want me. He <laughs> knows how fucked up he is. You know, you know? so. So you're right, uh, Atrocido. The NFL has been racist for a long time. They've had serious problems with these kinds of issues for a long time. So nobody should be surprised at how the NFL completely screwed up their whole pregame. Uh, 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 what do you call it? What? What? I don't even know what they try. But you know, their 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 race, their their fighting racism right. minstrel uh, show. But before we get into that, I want to we, we want to say hey to folks uh, uh, in the chat. What's yeah, going on, let's, Phil? Yeah, let's see who's, who's out there. Yep, Phil Winter, Trasido, how you going? Neil Sanger, howdy, howdy. Uh, Forrest Hinton. Forrest said that the Super Bowl will always be Janet Jackson Appreciation Day. Y'all oh, remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, we this, like yeah, that. We yeah, dig that. Yeah. We we dig that. Uh, yes, Neil, we, uh, we talked to, uh, on By Any Means Necessary, we have uh, uh, Nate Wallace uh, of Red Spin Sports on our show every Friday. So definitely check out Red Spin Sports, y'all. Check out Nate Wallace and his crew over there. And you can hear Nate Wallace on By Any Means Necessary every Friday. And you right. better believe we're going to have him on this show uh, very, very soon. Karina, how you doing? Good to see you, sis. Uh, torches and pitchforks. We hope those are squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Heather Morris, good to see you. Kai Watts. Uh, hey, so, all right, cool. It's good to see you all. We appreciate you. And everybody who is not on screen, who are just watching, Hey, well, thanks. The, welcome. What we call them, the, the shy view. The, the shikers, Stesha Marie. Yeah, how you yeah, doing? Yeah. The shy viewers, the lurkers. <laughs> God bless you. Thank All you right. for coming. So let's take a look at why this uh, uh, NFL um, uh, uh, effort at racial whatever it is they were trying to do is just some garbage. This is one of the reasons why. Do do. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 wow. Where the hell do I begin? I mean, I mean, I, 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 you know, look, I yearn the for the days of the, of the Dorito commercial, you know, and, you know, <laughs> Budweiser commercials, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, this this was really pathetic. It was really awful. Yeah. And and let let's try to walk through just some of the reasons why that particular commercial was awful, awful. But but I understand that there were other commercials along those lines that were just as bad but yeah. this this one was particularly cringe worthy you're right neil uh neil sanger cringe hard cringe painful cringe um first of all because <clears throat> was it actually directed by puffy Something, somebody <laughs> said it was directed. really i hope I, i'm not sure is that true i don't know if it's true but it wouldn't surprise me because you know jay-z Right. And, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot about the Jay-Z connection. Okay. Let's start there. Yeah. Let's start yeah. right there. That's a good place to start. Listen here. <laughs> if this is what the result of Jay-Z's deal with the NFL was all about, right? if this was the power moves that remember when people were criticizing this mm -hmm. deal that Jay-Z made oh, yeah. with yeah. the NFL after after Beyonce did that, you know, that yeah, uh, Black Hollywood Panther Black Panther yeah. type of 
yeah, whatever that or, or bl uh, black, uh, yeah, Black Panthers tribute at the Super Bowl, and and the radicals were like, you can't make a deal with the NFL that they are going to allow you to do anything to actually benefit right, us. Right. They are pulling the strings. This isn't a power move on your behalf. It's a power move on their behalf because the NFL. They control the purse strings. They're throwing you some crumbs. And people who love Jay Z and B or Bay or whatever, whatever they call it, they didn't want to hear it. No, they didn't want to hear it. Oh, they making power moves. And and all y'all doing is marching and protesting. That's what a couple people. Yeah, that's what a couple people I I know personally told me. Yep. But if these are the power moves that are the result of Jay Z's contract with the NFL, he can keep them. What where where is the power in this? And and let me let me if those of you if you're not familiar with who the person who was speaking is, <clears throat> the person who was doing the commentary is uh Ladanian Tomlinson. He's a former football player, and this uh was a, a speech that he gave when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame right. in 2020. Now this is important to point out because Tomlinson was being honored as a Hall of Fame player. And he said he revised his Hall of Fame speech um, because of the Black Lives Matter movement. And this is what he said. And I hope you guys can see, yeah, the comments <clears throat> from this article about this on, on the screen. He said, I firmly believe that God chose me to help bring two races together under one last name, Tomlinson. I don't know what the devil that means, but that's what, in his mind, that's what he, oh, I'm sorry, he he revised his speech from the 2017 Hall of Fame induction speech. So he revised it for this ad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he said, I'm of mixed race and I represent America. <laughs> My story is America's story. All our ancestors, unless we're American Indian, came from another country, another culture. Fo football is a microcosm of America. All races, religions, and creeds, living, playing, competing side by side. So you heard that in his speech. Now, look, let's, let's deal with what he said just right there. Mm -hmm. This whole idea that we all came from someplace else, so that all puts us in the same position on the same footing in this country is garbage. Right, right. And and it's not because we all came from someplace else. That's true. But how we all came from someplace exactly. else. Our ancestors didn't choose to be here. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, this whole thing about I'm of mixed race. Don't say that kind of stuff when you're talking about our ancestors. Because our ancestors in this country and in every other country our ancestors were dropped off in along the transatlantic slave route, they weren't of mixed race because they were raping anybody. Right. Exactly. Well, what did James Baldwin say in the speech yeah. that we were listening to earlier? Yeah. Earlier, he said that my grandmother wasn't as light-skinned as she was, not because she was she raping right, anybody. Exactly. exactly. That's not how that went. So, so, so someone who is the descendant of a people who were brought here by force to be currency and forced labor who were also uh raped tortured and bred for profit it's not our job to bring together the two races the race the the the, the group of people who were enslaved and subjected to that torture and the group of people whose ancestors perpetuated that torture on our that's not our job to bring those people and this mindset that black folks have that that has been imbued in us mm -hmm. by this white supremacist society right, right. that it's our job to bring black people and white people together all that does is absolve white people of their responsibility for owning up to their shit well the thing of it is is that you know america is comfortable with its idealism of um, brotherhood and mm -hmm. sisterhood and all this stuff that's the reason why you know every um uh year you know we get we always hear the, the i have a dream speech even though um martin luther king was still alive when he even became disillusioned of the speech <laughs> right you know, but um the, the thing of it is is that um you know you're right jackie and, and 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 i think the biggest problem with that is when we see 
um, uh, black people in, in all of these different institutions in this country um, and, and, and feeling that it's their duty in order to bring the races together. Um, but one of the reasons why I've always had a problem with that, because it suggests is that we have to prove, you know, or something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're the inferior ones. And so we have to prove to the majority society or white people that somehow we're worthy of being in, into uh, a brotherhood and sisterhood with you. So, we, you know, we just need to come together so you can see, you know, um, and, and not to get off the subject, but remember that video that um, was on the, uh, it was making rounds on the internet. And I think this was after George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And you had this black man, I know that he meant, I know he meant well, uh, you know, and but he got, you know, he, he, he it was a dark skinned guy with dread. Many of you probably even remember this video. And it starts off as, I go to church every Sunday. Oh, I remember right, that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wear a suit. I see have a job. Me. Right. I'm, I'm more in, than what you see. Right. I like opera. You know, um, I pick roses in my yard. You know, I walk my dog. You know, <laughs> right. when I sit down, I eat with a knife and fork. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and it's like, you know, I don't live in a hut. I actually have a nice $300,000 home. You know, um, you know, I've never had a parking ticket. Right, you know? right. And I was just like, please already. <laughs> please. Yeah. Please, please stop, stop justifying your existence exactly. to white people in a society that they are, that that most white people, that, that a vast majority of the white people in this country are heavily invested in keeping exactly the way it is. Exactly. The, and, and us appealing to their better angels and trying to appear that, look, we're decent people just like you. You know, there's no reason for, you know, all of the, the, the all of the police violence, because if you only got to right. know us, you would know that we're just like you. And I, we're not sitting here just th throwing shade at people just for the sake of throwing shade at people. Although we do enjoy doing that sometimes. But that's why y'all love us. But you know, yeah, yeah but, we, we go beyond the surface. <laughs> but this is what Tomlinson himself said. He he said. um. You know, how can I use this platform to address the nation and create some kind of a template on how to come together as one? Um, he talks about, you know, the idea of Team America is a concept that we need as a nation is to be united, is to really care about our neighbors. Um, then he says, you got to take the chance and the opportunity to get to know someone that doesn't look like you. And, and, when, and when Black people say this, I really want black people to understand that when you say this to white people, white people never ever think that they are actually talking, that you're actually talking to them because they are not interested in getting to know the, and, and you know why they can do that? Because they don't live around us and they make it that way. Just the fact that I keep sharing the demographic map and I'm going to have to dust it off yeah, you gotta dust it and off. remind people again, most of the white people in this country do not live around us. And, and it's intentional. They mean it that way. They like it that way. So they don't want to get to know people who well, look different than they do. Right. And, and oftentimes, uh, even when, um, uh, you know, well-intentioned liberal white folks, even when they live in the same city we live in, oftentimes um, we're kept out um, by economics, mm -hmm. you know, because of the racial wealth gap being as, as um, you know, as vast as it is, you know. Um, you know, a lot of times it'd be like, well, we're not preventing you from moving in this neighborhood. You just have to be able to earn two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, <laughs> uh, AMI in order to right, live here. What's right. preventing you from doing that? So you know, <laughs> right. so so you know, so it's it's you know, it's so so again, there isn't any effort. And I, and I was watching a video today um, uh, on Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. where um, he, he basically said the same thing. And this goes uh, directly to the NFL. You mm -hmm. know how everybody you know could talk about. Uh, um, you know, now I don't know too many of these players today because I stopped following football a while ago. But say in my day, where you had um, uh, um, people that used to cheer on Randall Cunningham or they cheer mm -hmm. on, uh, um, you know, the, the, their favorite running back who's oftentimes black, mm -hmm. or they cheer, um, you know, um, uh, uh, Doug Williams and, you know, right, you know all, right. of these, all of these black supermen that, um, you know, that they, that they would sit up there and, you know, yeah, that's my guy. That's this and that. And that's that. That's the other. But it's superficial, mm -hmm. you know, it's superficial, mm -hmm. you know, because then it's like when you when you make something a thing, which is what um, uh, racism in this country, systemic racism has made us a thing. 
that's what you see us as. You, right. you know, run, nigga, run, box, nigga, box. Commodities. You know? Right, commodities. So now, and I think what what um, Kaepernick and then, you know, um, uh, um, uh, sports figures before him, like when Muhammad Ali mm -hmm. um, and, and, and um, you know, back in the 60s and, right. and when the um, the brothers um, in the Olympics, you know, mm -hmm. so when, when that was tried before to um, get America's attention on its racial problem, uh, the first thing it is, is that, well, you know, sports is not the place for that. And uh, but when is the space? Because see the see the thing of it is, is that Kaepernick was forced to kneel because y'all wasn't listening to us in any other space. Right. So the marches didn't work because mm -hmm. that's not the way you that's do it. Way you do I mean, um, anger that's didn't work. Oh well, you know. Oh, we were, well, right. We I would support you if you weren't right. so angry. Right. If you weren't so angry, we would listen to you. So you know. So we said, okay. Well, you know, let's let's be peaceful. I mean, our our ancestors, um, the John Lewis's, the ones y'all say you love so much. John Lewis got his head beat in um, by walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge mm -hmm. and everything. And, you know, and, and didn't, I mean, he, bore, him and others bore the brunt of the brutality of, 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 um, of, the, of racism. And yet um, the needle didn't move. So, you know, so all of these things about, you know, only if you did it this way, only if you did. So the desperation came because, look, nobody wants to keep on living. Um, in a society where they keep feeling like they're second and third class citizens. Nobody wants that. So what happens is you get desperate enough where someone says, well, man, I, I got this big platform. Millions of people are tuning in to see me play or to see us play. Mm -hmm. Damn it to hell. I mean, you ain't listening to me when I march. Right. You're not listening right. when I write the, um, um, when I write um, a letter to the editor. Mm -hmm. You don't listen to me, you know, when, uh, when, you know, when we march in the streets, when we do this, when we do that, when we have protests. You don't listen. Even when we try to sneak it in in our entertainment, mm -hmm. you don't pay attention mm -hmm. to that because you like the beat. You don't hear the words. Right. So what happened is, is the fact that I got this big platform. You know, let, you know, let, let me at least make it known that this just isn't right. And then what happens? You get the backlash. Mm -hmm. You get the oh well, you know, LeBron James. He he took some of that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, you know, when he was trying to explain. Uh, um, uh, what is what everybody knows about the police brutality? Lauren Ingram talking about, well, you know, well, you should just shut, shut up, up and play. dribble. Yeah. So, I mean, so this type of disrespect that we would not, that this country does not uh, 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 um, put on anybody else. Nope. No other group. I mean, they don't put it on nobody else. There is never this callousness when it comes to the, the human rights of others. But when it comes to us, that, you know, it's all of a sudden like, well, you know, look, you know, you're an athlete. Why are you complaining? You got millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But how many how many athletes who had millions of dollars, and we've seen this in recent years, who still got murdered by the police, uh, who still was yeah. treated unjustly? Right. You know, I mean, um, movie stars who, um, who's well known, black, all of them got a story mm -hmm. of being, um, you know, being the victim of the race in the society. So the NFL is like this, this and, and like all institutions in this uh, country, Jackie, is that there, um, these institutions, including the NFL, needs to be modernized. Mm -hmm. And that is the resistance. The resistance is that these old edifices, these old structures that um, all of these institutions are built on in this country, that, you know, it, it, they're outdated. That they're absolutely outdated. And they're all infected with, well, no, they're not infected with white supremacy. They're all white supremacists institutions i don't care what it is because they're all founded on white supremacist ideology and 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 i'm going to finish up with this uh ladanian tomlinson tomlinson thing because he says something that that's really crazy he says oh, uh, football is a microcosm of america all races religions and creeds living playing competing side by side you know what ladanian that's a lie and and this is the problem that we have when we have athletes movie stars, singers, I don't care who it is, who don't have a clear and firm understanding of the capitalist system in this country and how it's connected to white supremacy and what it does in order to maintain its power. It creates a system where none of us are equally competing side by side. How in the world can you talk about we came here because we were forced to come here. Mm -hmm. We were enslaved, we were commodified, we were forcefully bred. And the, the wealth gap is a chasm now because of the legacy of that. And, and somehow this, this man, black man, LaDainian Tomlinson, believes that he can unite the two races together because he thinks that we're, 
that that in America we're all living and competing side by side. But mm -hmm. I but I don't even know if he even believes that. And I, and I you know I used to say this about Obama. Mm. You know when Obama um you know used to say the same thing. We've heard these things from from these uh, you know black famous people for a long time. Obama was probably beside this guy. Obama was probably the latest manifestation of the hopeful Negro syndrome, I call it. <laughs> but um, you know, with that, which the masses of black people tune out. Right. Now this and, and this is the thing. Um, the masses of black folks um will hear a speech by um Tom Tomlinson, right? Mm -hmm. And like they did with Barack Obama before him. And and the black masses, you know, the ones that y'all, you know, lock your doors on when you see them and you know, all the stuff, the ones that you drive through the drive, all you know, what I call, you know, the um the black extras of the country. Like it's like a movie, and you got the extras, you see them, but you uh -huh. don't right. This is what black people are in this country. We're extras. You don't have yeah. to pay them scale, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Don't yeah. Have you don't have to, to pay them scale. They're just, you know, they just they they just spread out through the movie, mm -hmm. but you don't pay no particular attention to them, you know. So that's what we are in this country. We're the extras. And so what happens is, is that the extras. Don't um uh those they, they it falls on deaf ear because with all of this aspirational um you know I idealism mm -hmm. you know the masses knew a long time ago that that's not true you know they know that it has no bearings on their life right and so this is but but this is one of the I think one of the cruel ironies about capitalism in this country we know that we were born here um, our ancestors were born here. Um, uh, to feed this capital capitalism, hmm. right? To build mm -hmm. this capitalist nation, mm -hmm. and the fact that um, even when we were so-called free, the reason why we weren't given any reparations is because capitalism needs somebody to exploit. So it was already okay. We'll free them, but then you said something about the convict lease system, all the different ways that they they um, uh, re-enslaved us, mm -hmm. um, mass incarceration. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, throughout our stay here, but all of this was yes, it was evil. Uh, it was devious. It was all of those things. But the main thing it was, was is for economic reasons. That's right. You know, but pro Professor Richard Wolf, very good friend of ours, mm -hmm. um, stated in his book, um, uh, you know, the, the sicknesses in the system, uh -huh. which I just read. And one of the things that he made it clear, which I agree with, is that black people, as brown people and poor people, are used as the shock absorbers for the capitalist failure. Uh, so, uh -huh. you know, so, so, so the reason why I say that, that it's so insidious the way that it is, because you'll look at uh, um, the the athletes and all of the millions that LeBron has and all of this, but then when you look at how they're treated, they're not treated any different than us black extras who nobody sees. That's right. Both of us serve as commodities for the capitalists. Mm. So yeah, mm -hmm. you, got, you might have LeBron James money, but as Chris Rock once said, you know, um, yeah, LeBron James is rich, but the one who writes his check is wealthy. Is wealthy, and exactly. so you you see that even the owners and and you know the rich the rich wealthy elite, you see that they don't see them any different than they see us black extras who they who goes about our day and day uh, existence not being seen by anybody. That's right. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So and, and this this is what's so cruel about it. Your, their, their wealth. Their um um uh, uh fame, mm -hmm. um uh you know everything that that they that they think their their um, status had afforded them has not brought them out of the of the confines of the racist system how they're viewed mm -hmm. and how they're treated. That that's absolutely true, and and it's these kind of feel good kind of uh, comments that can be put to stirring music and and inspirational images that are always used, you know, from black people, from black athletes, from the few black elite that the system that is run by the, the white supremacist, the capitalist mm -hmm. elite, always used to keep the rest of us in check. Because you know what else happened with all of the pre, the Super Bowl mm -hmm. pre, uh, 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 pre game uh, hoopla mm -hmm. that, you know, people noticed, but as much as the NFL did with all these videos and, you know, declaring, you saw at the end of the video that the, the NFL will pledge $250 million to end systemic racism. And that's chump change because I know you had <laughs> an ad, I mean, not an ad, an article that showed you how much the NFL actually made last year. Let me tell you something. First of all, million. how many times do we have to say that to end systemic racism in this country, you got to end capitalism? And capitalists are never going to end capitalism. 
They're not going to end their cash cow. So they ain't serious no. about ending some systemic racism. How do we know this is true? Well, because. <laughs> so in all of this pregame hoopla, all and there were some other ads and, you know, all the black people and Alicia Keys singing, lift yeah, every voice and sing and sing. white people losing their minds because right. they found out that we have a song that they didn't know about and now that they know about it, it they approve. don't approve, they didn't approve it. <laughs> so alicia keys is apparently a black supremacist because she sang a black national anthem that white people didn't know we had now that they know they're mad about it right, they're mad right. they're mad but you know die give, mad i don't know what you want because okay they didn't approve of it and now that they know about it they don't approve right. they mad but i'm just like well die mad i mean i like the song I don't think, as James Clyburn said, that making it a national hymn is going to do a damn thing toward racial healing, but it's our song. You don't like it? Something too bad for you. Yep. But here's how we know the NFL is not serious about doing anything about systemic racism. This is an article in Fast Company, and I think there are a few tweets in here that are very important. You know who they didn't talk about? You know who they didn't mention in all of the pregame mm. hoopla? Mm. Colin Kaepernick. The very person who set the NFL on this course of racial reckoning a few years ago, NFL didn't make any mention to him or Eric Reed right, right, right. or Michael Bennett or any of the black athletes and a few white athletes who have been in this struggle for racial justice from the beginning. They did not mention Colin Kaepernick. Uh, this is what this article in Fast Company is about. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says that long before Nike decided to put Colin Ka Kaepernick in his 2000 in a, in a 2018 ad, the quarterback's ongoing silent protest of police brutality against black people got him removed from the NFL. Let us not ever ever forget that Colin Kaepernick was and still is blackballed from the NFL. Yes, and the point is not the point <laughs> in bringing that up is not to say that he should have a job in the NFL. That's just to, we bring that up to tell you, to remind you so that you never forget how far the NFL will go mm. to avoid the issue that was raised by Colin Kaepernick. Rather than address the issue, they got rid of him. And they decided to punish anybody who would kneel, stand, or support him. That's, that's why we say that. But, so, but, but what they have done is they decide that, well, what we're going to do is that we're going to pick the ones who are more comfortable for us. Right. This is why you have a black athlete, a black former football player in LaDainian Tomlinson right. with his words behind this ridiculous uh, uh, Super Bowl pregame ad about, you know, ending systemic racism with a bunch of words that mean actually nothing and don't reflect the truth of the situation at all. Also, even though in Tomlinson's comments, about the revision of the speech, he mentioned Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Tomlinson's words about Colin Kaepernick and Black Lives Matter were not included in the NFL ad. Right, exactly. As a matter of fact, none of the pregame shows before uh, uh, the Super Bowl and none of the so-called inclusion ads or whatever, the Inspire ads, that's what they're calling, calling them, none of them mention police brutality, None of them mention Black Lives Matter. None of them <coughs> mention Colin Kaepernick. So, of course, you know, the, the NFL, uh, uh, Twitter rather, noticed that because Twitter misses nothing. Right. Um, and yeah, th these are all of the tweets. Uh, and I hope you can see them uh, clearly. This the first one is from Jamel Hill. In that Inspire Change commercial, the NFL forgot to show the part where they blackballed Colin Kaepernick have only three black NFL head coaches and no majority black ownership. Exactly. We're going to get into that in a second. Uh, we saw the Inspire Change commercial. Uh, <laughs> someone else said, oh, and, and this is what the NFL tweeted because they tweeted the commercial out too. Oh, while our season is ending, our fight for equity is not. It takes all of us to create change and advance social justice. Learn more at NFL.com, Inspire Change. And then someone said, but still won't hire Cap. Not, right, only won't, right. not only won't hire him, but won't even mention the man's name. Exactly. I, that, that is egregious. That's, a, that's an egregious affront to him. 
and everything he did and stood for and everything he lost because of it. But, but it is an indication, it's a glaring indication of how far the NFL will still go to not actually address this issue. So this, this is a really, a really great uh, article with a bunch of tweets in Fast Company uh, about the, the uh, uh, what do I want to call it? Whitewashing, greenwashing, mm. <laughs> green for the turf. The, 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 the whitewashing of, of Colin Kaepernick from this whole racial inclusivity, sensitivity, whatever the hell it is that the NFL did. And speaking of the ownership of the NFL, this is why they won't do it. Let me, let me make sure I got my, I think I got my stuff right this time. There we go. Yeah, now this, this actually tells a big part <laughs> of what we're trying to convey tonight. Now, in order to understand why the NFL operates the way it does and why we why we say the NFL is a white supremacist institution, it's not just there that there is white supremacy in the NFL. It's not just that there is racism in the NFL. The NFL exists as a reflection of American society in the way that white supremacy is at the root and in control right. of every institution in this society, right along with capitalism. Because there are, uh, let's see, defensive coordinators in, in the NFL. What is it, 66 teams? Mm -hmm. There are only five defensive coordinators who are not white in the NFL. Somebody correct us for how many NFL teams there are. I can never get it straight. Um, uh, what, no, 30-something teams. I'm not sure. Anyway, but in all of them, <laughs> there are only five defensive coordinators who are not white. Uh, there is only one general manager who is not white. Uh, there is only one 32 teams. head coach. Thank you. 32. I don't know why I doubled it. Yep. <laughs> it was like 32 teams. There are 32 NFL teams. Uh, only one head coach who is not white. Mm, mm, mm. 31 total positions. 24 of those positions are filled by white men. Only seven are filled by men of color. And that's just the general managers, the head coaches, the offensive coordinators. I mean, this is not the support staff. I mean, we're not even talking about the support we're staff. We're not even talking about the support right, staff. And right. you know who else we're not talking about? Mm. The owners. The owners, yep. The owners. Most, if not all, if I'm not mistaken, all NFL teams are owned by white people. Yes, rich white men. Rich, mostly rich white men. Um. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, there was talk of uh, Bob Johnson at one time wanting to buy the uh, um, uh, the Carolina teams Oops. at one time. Yeah, but see, here, here's the thing. Here's how we get tripped up with that kind of stuff. You know, because there were talks about uh, Diddy buying a team or maybe that was a basketball team. I don't know. But, but here's where we get tripped up with that kind of stuff. The people who own NFL teams will enter into a partnership agreement with other people to own NFL teams. Even rich black people don't have enough money to outright buy a whole NFL team without entering into a partnership. Yep. So this was was the situation with what Diddy and, what was it, the, the New Jersey Nets or something? Or whatever, yeah, the yeah, basketball team? Yeah, or? It was, um, yeah, it was supposed to be some basketball team. Well, even with Jay-Z. And, yep. and, and and this was the the okie doke thing with Jay Z with the Nets. That, you know, yeah, thank where, you, Phil. Yeah. It was Jay Z with the Nets. Right, right. When um Jay Z was, you know, everybody was like, "Oh, Jay Z making power moves." You know? <laughs> and found out, man, he, that he only had like a one percent share. Or, Precisely. Yeah, you know, come on. So I mean, you know, he probably served bagels at the meeting <laughs> because you know he he wasn't no significant policy maker there. He didn't have enough. Uh, uh, um, uh, he, he didn't have a, a a deciding interest in the stock in the team, wasn't on the board, had a, you know, one, like you said, 1% interest. Right, right. He ain't making no decisions. He ain't no. making no power moves. He's making some money for himself. 
right? But that that's it. And but he's being used by the team to 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 say, look, look at how inclusive we are. Look at look at this black member of our team. Right, right. He's the token. Yeah. So so we're really glad that that uh, uh, our friends over at Red Spin Sports are on. And uh, they say the most egregious is the Kansas City offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy and Tampa Bay offensive coordinator, Byron Leftwich, not being head coaches this offseason. I mean, the, you you got to check out Red Spin Sports to have them really get deep into why these issues of hiring black uh, coaches, offensive coordinators, black people in these management and decision-making roles on these teams are really, really important. When it's not done, it's a constant fight. Mm -hmm. And it's really important in this conversation of the NFL fighting to end systemic racism. And, and here's another reason why that's also bullshit. Um, from this, I, I we should have gave a disclaimer at the beginning of this show that it's going to be a lot of cussing because, yeah, yep. Oh, so, so the NFL announces that they're giving two hundred fifty million million dollars, million dollars yeah. to end systemic racism, right? And I don't know if they're going to give that two hundred fifty million dollars to themselves because. The NFL has a systemic racism problem that is has now been proven in an area other than the crappy uh, hiring of non-white coaches, coordinators, and the existence of no black owners. And this is in an, in an incredibly important area of NFL culture, and that is in uh, the examination and the compensation for players who have suffered uh, CTEs or concussion related injuries. This was reported uh, in the ABC News, but it was also carried by the New York Post of all places. Um, and the article says that clinicians fear that the NFL's concussion settlement program protocols discriminate against black players. Now, listen, y'all, I don't know how the NFL is talking about they are committing $250 million to ending systemic racism, when in their own program that they have set up to compensate former players for their claims for concussion-related injuries discriminates against black players. And this is not something we made up. Luke Mons didn't make up this up because we hate the NFL and the white people who run the NFL. No, the clinicians who work in this program who make the determinations on who should be compensated and who shouldn't be, their communication between each other right. have been revealed as a major part of this lawsuit against the NFL by two former black players who are suing the NFL for racial discrimination. Well, one of the things about um, this two hundred fifty million dollars that we failed to mention that oh, we mentioned now uh -huh. that it's going to be over a ten year period. Oh, you mean it's like the fifteen dollar an hour yeah, minimum right, wage? Right, right, They're not right, going right. to do it right now. No. They're going to spread it out over a few out. years. Right, right, right. You know, by that time, enough of us probably would have would have died from right. like starvation or whatever. Now, the thing of it is, is that they did mention Kaepernick in their um, announcement of this. What mm -hmm. they said was that um, that um, when Kaepernick first took a knee. They um, basically they gave him a shout out. They said we wouldn't be here, that we wouldn't be where we are today without the work Colin and other players have uh, led off. Uh, this is what the um, I don't know who this guy is, but um, uh, he, he's who he is. Let's uh, see. He's a um, policero or something. Like I said, I haven't been mm. in the loop with these guys. But the thing of it is, is that that was. And then when they say um, uh, Colin Kaepernick's name, they um, you know just Colin. And, right, um, and, right, yeah. So it was like, you know, yeah, yeah, we wouldn't be here, um, where we are today without the work of Colin, you know, and, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Colin, you know and other Colin. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but, 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 uh, according to this article that I have, Jackie, um, how the money is supposed to be spent is that they're going to fund 20 national social justice, uh, it's going to be into 20 national grants, mm -hmm. 
grant. <laughs> and these grant partners, um, and the partners are going to make a matching contribution and to 350 local grassroots organizations that's supposed to be receiving sure. this, right? Uh huh. So now the mm -hmm. fund will balloon to 250 million dollars. And it's going to be in criminal justice reform because, yeah, you know, that's that's that, you know, look, uh -huh. that's all we need um, <laughs> is, is, you know, police reform, and economic and educational advancement for African-Americans. The league also announced it will continue to leverage NFL Network and its other media properties to, quote, place an increased emphasis on raising awareness and promoting education of social justice issues to our fans. You know what? Screw them and, and their bullshit. Uh, a little announcement that they put on a website that they knew most people weren't going to go to. Right. And they didn't say any of that stuff. They especially didn't talk about Colin Kaepernick in public before the Super Bowl when they had all of this other coordinated. They had the world watching, the world watching, right? <sighs> but see, here we go. Um, the NFL are, are, are hypocrites because in their own concussion program, what happens is players have to go to the NFL, um, these clinicians who measure the cognitive decline of the players. And if their cognitive decline is significant enough because of the concussions, then they're approved for uh, their claim for mm -hmm. compensation right. is approved. Here's the problem. Um. The NFL insists that its concussion settlement program does not require that clinicians who evaluate former players for payouts to make race a factor in their determinations, but they do. Several of those clinicians, however, appear to disagree, and some of them fear that the league's recommended protocols discriminate against black players. In August, a group of neuropsychologists who measure cognitive decline in former NFL players seeking financial compensation through the league's landmark settlement program, took to their professional list serves to discuss some recent industry news. Two black former players, defensive end Kevin Henry and running back Najee Davenport had filed a lawsuit against the NFL, accusing the league of explicitly and deliberately discriminating against black players filing dementia related claims. Uh, let's see where, yeah, one neuropsychologist <clears throat> claimed that the league's program manual offered no flexibility in how they assess the, uh, cognitive decline of the players. And here's what they do. They do something called race norming where players come in and everybody's supposed to have a baseline of mm -hmm. cognitive function. Race norming, according to the NFL manual in their own concussion uh, uh, a compensation program, race norming dictates that clinicians have to take into account that African-American players have a lower cognitive level of ability than white players when they come into the league, right? So literally, Black players have less cognitive function than white players. So whatever cognitive decline black players come into the league or into the concussion program with their claim for, the assessment has to be adjusted to right. account for the beginning lower cognitive decline that black players supposedly had. What does this mean? It means that black players have to, they have a higher standard of proof. They have to prove a greater level of cognitive decline than white players do. What does that mean? That means fewer black players have their claims for concussion related injuries approved than white players. And the clinicians who are making the assessments for the NFL point this out in their own communications on their listserv. One neuropsychologist claimed the league's program manual offered no flexibility to deviate from this race norming thing. They said, I don't think we have the freedom to choose. The clinician wrote, if we do, apparently many of us have been doing it wrong. Another clinician 
bemoan their possible complicity in a system that perpetuated racial inequality in payouts. Quote, especially in the, co in the correct of our current state of, of affairs, I'm realizing and feeling regretful for my culpability in this inadvertent system, uh, systemic racism issue. As a group, we could have been better advocates. Well, I mean, well, one of the things is I got up over here about um, the Civil Rights Act of 1991 where race norming was declared illegal. So the NFL has a manual. And, and by the way, I'm sorry, y'all, you can get that article. Uh, read the rest of that article on ABC News. Um, let me put it up again so you can see it. And so you can grab it so you can see the title. Clinicians fear NFL's concussion settlement program protocol protocols discriminate against black players. They do. <laughs> um, so here you have a situation where, I, you know, the NFL has a program in which in which a. A. a in which race norming is used but it has been deemed illegal. Clinicians have communicating between themselves, admitted, yes, the, the manual tells us to do this. And the NFL is saying that we have the choice to not do it. And they're saying among each other, I don't see where they've told us that we have to do anything different. And if we do, then we get punished. But this is the same NFL now who is going to commit $250 million to ending systemic racism. Yeah. And my point being is, is if, if the 1991 civil rights, um, passed of the Civil Rights Act, which was, uh, uh, which had clearly stated that race norming and any other means of changing or modifying employment related tests on the basis of race or ethnicity is illegal. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. it's illegal, then why is the NFL still practicing it? That's right. not being entitled. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, that's not being entitled. What it is, is that you're using an illegal practice to prevent paying um, um, the benefits to um, your black employees that that's they're rightfully right. owed to. That's not entitlement. Mm -hmm. That's justice. That's just and, and, the, and the problem of it so much is that so many people in this country feel that, um, you know, when it comes to us, that, you know, justice has got to be entitlement. No, it's not entitlement. Right. It's justice, especially in in a league in a profession, which over 80, 80, 80 percent, I think, of the players are black. Right. And and it's, you know, but that's what makes it even worse, because the thing of it is, is that if you got 80 percent of the black players generating all of this um, income for the NFL, I mean, I think it was like nine nine hundred and eighty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. If I if I can remember that the NFL um, uh, nine point five, I'm sorry, nine point five billion dollars. Um, that the uh, NFL have earned, and a lot of that, and every year they're making the media pay more and more mm -hmm. to broadcast their games. So when you got a, a workforce of eight, that's that's eighty percent black, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, eighty percent black. Now that's almost the damn whole NFL, mm -hmm. and they're bringing in nine point five billion dollars through their talent and effort, and yet you put in these uh, uh, illegal. Um, in uh, unjust um, criteria mm -hmm. that's based on uh, stereotypes that go all the way back to slavery. Right. Because that's where it comes from. That's right. You know, black people aren't the same as whites. You know, uh, they, 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 you know, they feel less pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the black buck is so strong, mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, that, oh my God, you know, it takes like a, you know, a whole, you know, I mean, we've seen this, uh, we've seen these stereotypes play itself out. Um, in law enforcement where, oh, we had to shoot him because, I mean, he's a big black male. And I mean, my God, you know, how well, they get angry. You know? <laughs> right, right. I mean, the same way with, with the um, we talked about with uh, uh, yesterday with the way that our children are viewed, mm -hmm. the adultification mm -hmm. of our children where they're mm -hmm. not seen as children. And so their treatment is different than opposed to children of other groups. All of this stuff is rooted in slavery, just like the racist attitudes of, of, of that we have here is rooted in slavery. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they persist on and on and on is because this country has never dealt with it. There has never been a uh, there has never been an honest conversation. You know, you look at idiots that get on here um, on the internet and stuff, and you know they they flippantly talk all this uh, ignorance and nonsense and stuff. But that's 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 how much the dialogue has been in this country. The dialogue is like, well, nobody's trying to understand. 
you know, mm -hmm. and on one side, it's like, well, you know, the country's been great to us, right? Because our, right. our you know, the government made sure our ancestors were good. Now, if you, you know, now, of course, um, um, you know, folks will say, well, my grandfather, you know, he mm -hmm. he was he was poor, and it's like, you know, but we're not talking about uh, um, um, these individual things, right? But on a collective, mm -hmm. the country has been good to white people, so the so, so the thing, and and that can't be denied, mm -hmm. so. You know, but the country has not been as good to black people on whole. Don't give me Oprah. Don't give me mm -hmm. Bob Johnson. Don't mm -hmm. give me LeBron James. Uh -huh. Don't cherry pick these people who you want to throw up in the faces of the masses of millions who has systemically been left out of the so-called American opportunity stuff. It's not a meritocracy. Anytime that yesterday when we got on air and we showed where a study was done that even five-year-old black girls I, uh, have already been labeled. Mm -hmm. Where's the meritocracy at? Right. When when a kindergarten right. black girl um, is looked at as being less innocent than a white girl, and 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 so you know here it is. You only been in the plant. You only been in existence for five years, and all of a sudden white supremacy is saying that somehow you're worse than. So don't sit up here and tell me that you're going to try to bullshit that little girl mm -hmm. into believing that in this society. All she got to do is work hard. That's right. That's right. Give me a damn that's, break. That's, that's a damn lie. And and the people who perpetuate that lie are the ones who are controlling the purse for its purse strings. Right. Listen, the NFL, you get these these people talking about two hundred fifty million dollars, like you said, right. to, to end systemic over racism over ten, over, ten over ten years. Two hundred fifty million dollars over ten years. But this is from last year, July of 2020. NFL shared revenue hits a record $9.5 billion with dollars with a B as media payouts rise. This is important. $250 over 10 $250 years. Right. $250, $250 million right. over 10 over years. 10 years. Right. But change. Each, but each team, right. each NFL team, 32 NFL teams, each team received Two hundred ninety-six million dollars oh from the league. That was up last year eight percent from two hundred seventy-three to two hundred seventy-four point three million dollars in two thousand eighteen. The jump comes primarily from built-in increases to the league's broadcasting deals. Hold on, hold oh. on, wait, wait, hold oh, up, boy. hold up, wait a minute. Wow. You mean to tell me the NFL doesn't have to demand more money? They don't have to negotiate a contract from the media for more money? The increases are built in. They're automatic. If people want to advertise with the NFL, they got to pay whatever the NFL says every year, even if the cost goes up every year. It is built in. But, but, oh. In order to get $250 million over 10 years, mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick had to kneel and suffer the racist, terroristic, fascist violence because the man got death threats. His family got death threats of the NFL fans and more than half of the white population of this country and the politicians. And his ability to make a living. Lost his ability to make yeah. a living at his profession players who who you were united with him were also uh castigated and scorned then you had politicians going after black lives matter even more because right. of our support for Kaepernick mm -hmm. and this was over several years all that had to happen to get 250 million dollars over 10 years over 10 years but and, and, and but, but this is the thing, Jackie. Mm -hmm. How many more billions are those eighty percent of black players are going to be generating each year of those ten years? Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up mm -hmm. because the players, even because you know that the people always throw in our faces. Well, you know, look, the NFL is a great opportunity for some of these people. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't be making this kind of money if they weren't playing for no, the NFL. Of course not. You know, they're they're um, if if. It, it, they don't get an in, an increase in their pay that's automatic. They have to renegotiate their contracts yep, every year. Yep. And and the league, the team owners, have to decide if they want to pay what these players ask. 
Now, mind Every, you now, now, mind you now, a football player's career is the shortest in sports. The shortest, which is why this concussion settlement program and the racism in it is so important. Exactly. exactly. It is so important. So it's incredibly high, hypocritical for the NFL to have this huge, you know, feel good, uh, uh, racial sensitivity, whatever this bullshit was at the beginning of the Super Bowl. And talking about committing $250 million to ending systemic racism. Over 10 years. <laughs> over, thank you. Because I'm going to keep on Because you, you should, we years. should, over 10 years. Right. But they, but, but each team gets basically $270 million every year. Every, every year. Every single year. Right, right. Every year. So, so, and I they mean, don't have to ask for it. Now, I want to I wanna, um, uh, ask our audience Ooh, out there. Some Lord. of you are good at math, right? Oh, my God. I know we got some audience members <laughs> out there who are good at math. Can anybody tell me if uh, over the course of 10 years, um, break that $250 million mm -hmm. down over 10 years and how much it actually is going to be uh, on a yearly basis? Mm, somebody better do it. Uh, right, yeah, right. Y'all get to it. There's a little chart for you that shows the growth in the NFL's revenue. <sighs> yeah. Steady, steady growth over uh, the years, every single year. And it's automatic. The, the right. increases are, I, that just blows my mind. I didn't even know but, that. But, but, this is the, but this is what makes this so bad. Because these owners, even with all of this money that's, that's flowing into their coffers, mm -hmm. they still, um, uh, 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 when, when they still go to these cities, they still go to these city governments and stuff and extort tax breaks and money to build a stadium, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then they threaten uh, 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 with, well, we'll, ju we'll move the team mm -hmm. and all of these gangster tactics, yep. you know, um, uh, uh, you know, for the team uh, to stay where they are or, or, or for the owners to have their way. Mm -hmm. Yet these jokers ain't losing nothing. Not a dime. Not a dime. These people, thank you, Forrest. Forrest says 25, <laughs> 25 million. 25 million. So again. these people made this huge announcement like they were Santa Claus on Christmas morning, talking about we we are committed. We're gonna commit $250 million to the fight for uh to ending systemic racism. Then we dig down yep. into the fine print and we find out it's $250 million over 10 years. And what does that translate to? $25 million a year. From a $9.5 billion budget that, they, I mean, earnings mm -hmm. that they, no, not budget, earnings that mm -hmm. they received last year, $25 right. million. That's, you know, if you were to put that in, in real people's terms, that's like finding some loose change in your couch cover. <laughs> I mean, and, and not only the $9.5 billion, but each team, each 30, right. each of the 32 teams gets an equal share of the pot, $270 billion. All right, so you got 32 teams, right? Million At, dollars, yeah. 32 teams, uh -huh. and you said, and they get what, what each 200, team? 274, all right. 270, so basically, 290 million dollars right, So basically now. what you're saying is each, all each team got to do is put up a million bucks that, to pay for that year's uh, uh, black tax. And, and, and let's go back to what you said about meritocracy, because, right. you know, folks always talk about, well, you, oh, you just have to work hard and you could, even the teams that suck get the same amount of money. Right. Even the teams that don't make it out of the fucking playoffs, who don't make it to the playoffs, they get, that they get $296 right. million. They get you think that's fair? You still right. think it's a meritocracy? That's okay, though. And these same teams who get $296 million, amount of money going up every single right. year automatically. Nobody has to ask for it. Like you said, they come into these cities and they always go into neighborhoods that are poor, full of poor folks, full of black folks, full of Latinx folks, full of working class folks yeah. with a low tax base. A lot of people living in apartments and they say, well, we want to build a stadium here, right, right, right. but we're not going to pay any taxes or we'll create some jobs. But all the jobs are seasonal, part time and minimum wage. And now so you build these stadiums. And then now people got to be displaced. Yep. I mean, whole infrastructure um, turned around. And yet, instead of them coming out of their pockets, the city, the cities, and the, and the uh, where, where they where they they doing this hustle at, have to shortchange mm -hmm. basically their citizenry in order to um, uh, bring a, a stadium here. While this fat cat with the billions of dollars um, don't have to pay anything. Now, right. Forrest Hinton um, uh, said that this only is less than ten percent. 
of their budget. Yep. For each, I mean, less it, it, than yeah. 10%. Now, now, why mm -hmm. is that 10% such a magical number? I don't know. You know why? Know why? Because even when we had to defund the police, I, you know, racists love 10%. You it's know what I mean? It's a nice round yeah, it's number. It's a nice round number because you had the, the New York uh, uh, Police Department where they said, well, we'll cut something off our budget. Right. You know, uh, LA, oh, we'll cut a little something off. Yeah, but we're well, yeah, well, we 10%, you know, just, you know. So, so this is the thing. Racists love 10%. They do. They do, you know, it's like, okay, we'll give you 10%. Now, for 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 this entity of the NFL, and we done already went through their earning potentials and what they made and stuff, to give 10%, uh, uh, less than 10% of their budget for uh, an organization that depends on 80% of black people that came from these backgrounds mm -hmm. to earn them this money is criminal. Yeah, yeah. And and, and the point you were making about you know, uh, um, the the police budgets being cut, you know, in some of the major cities mm -hmm. by 10%. Oh, they make it like it's a big deal. Right. Oh, oh God, it's a, yeah, 150. We, we cut $150 oh. million dollars from our budget. We're going to be eating oodles and noodles. The cops there. Yeah. Oh. But your overall police budget is three billion right, dollars. Right, right, That's LA. That's Los Angeles. Oh, that's, that's Baltimore. That's, that's, that's Baltimore. I, I mean, come on. Yeah. So, so this this whole thing that the NFL has done, and, and we didn't even talk about everything because there's just so much ridiculousness. I don't even want to talk but about you got everything. Our point. You but, got our point. But we hope you got the point, and we understand that there are folks on here who don't agree, and we don't really give a shit. That's that's not. Well, I, mean, I mean, the the truth is what it is. You you can disagree with our commentary, but if you want to disagree with the facts and the numbers then that's a personal problem you have because the facts and the numbers are what they are. Well, see, the thing of it is, is that in Luke, my nation, we're not satisfied with mediocrity. We're not satisfied mm. with settling. We think that black people have settled too long in this country, mm -hmm. have been settling too long. You know, um, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not satisfied with, with the token crumbs um, from the, from the table of these capitalists. You know, it was our labor. It was the labor of our, our people that built this um, uh, country um, our blood that was shed, you know, and, and, and our um, uh, um, uh, intellectual properties that um, propelled. I mean, every time I, you know, I, I love the social media thing because when I was in school, we talked about this before, so much information that was hidden from us. Now mm -hmm. you go on the social media and you find out how black people were instrumental in developing this, uh, you know, developing that. And the fact that the vaccine now that there is a black woman in, in in the National Institute of Health who was responsible for the basic compounds mm -hmm. of what they put into this vaccine. So, you know, so the thing of it is, is that, you know, that's all well and good, but we, 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 we're going to stop. We have to stop settling for these little crumbs and be told, well, take this and shut up. Right. You know, and, right. and you know, and all that shaming tactics that these daggone <laughs> ignorant, dumbass <laughs> racists sit up here and talk about, well, you know, the Irish, they're not going to be angry. Well, I mean, well, well, good for them. Good for you them. You know, but, um, but they don't determine, uh, 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 um, you know, they don't determine shit for us. And, you know, and the thing of it is, is that um, they ain't got nothing to do with us and we ain't got nothing to do with them. So whether they get angry or not, that's on them. So the thing of it is, is that we're talking about us. We're talking about um, um, our survival here. We're talking about justice, which has never been really meted out the way that it should be. Everybody wants to dance around, you know, around the issues, right. you know, but the thing of it is, is that um, uh, uh, um, we are tired of, as I said before earlier, is that that we're tired of this 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 um what we call three car three car Monty mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. of of you know you know the way that they've been doing us and the fact that you know we're tired of being the shock absorbers of a ruthless parasitic capitalist system mm -hmm. and, and you know we hope that at least we we got you to look at how uh the capitalists who control um mm -hmm. sports sports entertainment use it to fool us into thinking they're doing something good for the people, but really all they're doing is throwing more crumbs at folks and raking in way more money than you and I uh, really understand that they're making. Now, see, now if Jackie and I, and in, 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 like if, if, if we if we were giving the ability to be able to have all black folks listen to us, right? <laughs> if we had the ability to have all black people follow us like we're Moses and Moset, right? 
And the first thing we would do, because, you know, people say, oh, y'all, you know, you always talk about the problem, the problem. But the thing of it is, is that if Jack and I had the ability to to um, have all black folks listen to us, the first thing we would say to black people on all levels is to go on a general strike. Yes. I don't care what industry you're in. Yep. I don't care uh, whether I, I don't care if, if you're in the, uh, a professional sport. Mm -hmm. I don't give a damn if you work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. This invest yourself from this capitalist parasitic system. And then we start to organize and create a parallel system that mm -hmm. works for us. That's right. Because that's the problem. We've been talking too much about reformation and the reforms still don't work for us. So what that means is, and I don't apologize for it, is that we're not going to get justice in a system that was never designed for us, that was designed to uh, to to uh, uh, to to suck the life blood out of us mm -hmm. and then pass the blueprint down to every other group saying, oh, you're coming to America, you want to get rich, go to the black community. Oh, you're coming to America, you want to get rich, go to the black community. So that blueprint that the original um, uh, 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 white capitalists had, oh man, they shared that with everybody. So right. now everybody come here and they be like, well, this is how we're going to get our American dream by going to the black community. The problem is, is that when we took the blueprint, you know, you bombed our cities. Right. You know what I mean? Right. We, you know, we had a Rosewood, we had a Black Wall Street, right. we had all this stuff. So you, we get that well, pull yourself by, by your bootstraps. And we pull ourselves by our bootstraps. And what we get, we get bombs and clan and, mm -hmm. and, and we get, you know, we get the Rosewoods and we get the Black Wall Streets and stuff. We get the summers of 1919 and right. all that stuff. When we try to do something, oh, we just outright just have the uh, banks and stuff just steal from us. Mm -hmm. And we have the government have policies and stuff where they just say, well, look, we're just going to just have um uh, um, um, uh, in, intimate domain. We're just mm -hmm. going to put the highways through the neighborhood. Right. We're Destroy gonna get, the neighborhoods. Right. And so we're going to rearrange. So, you know, so no other group had to go through that. So this is the reason why all of this, you know, uh, um, um, you know, um, uh, 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 insults and stuff that the dumb racists uh, try to give is stupid because the thing of it is, is the fact that, you know, first of all, they're ignorant, but when you know what's been done to you, mm. you know, you know, you, you, you understand that um, that 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 this was orchestrated and this was planned. And so what I'm saying is, is that this is the same system that did all of that. And mm -hmm. we're trying to reform it. We're trying to take a, a outdated plantation mm -hmm. and, and put some paint on it and, and, you know, and maybe try to put a new roof on it mm -hmm. and think that it's going to be any different. It's a nicer plantation. No, 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 no. You got to mm -hmm. blow it up. Tear that plantation down. Mm -hmm. You might want to put a plaque over here or something say, yeah, it once was here. <laughs> but it is time if we want to be able to compete in this world when you got the rise of other nations like the Chinese and everybody else. Because, see, one thing about life is cyclical. Mm -hmm. And so and, and the thing about life, there's rises and there fall. Nations come and nations go. This nation is going to go, too. But the thing of it is, is that if this nation wants to stop the... Uh, uh, the acceleration mm -hmm. of its destruction, you'll never compete with China by the way we, we treat each other in this country. You'll never compete with any... The Arabs, the ones that, that so many people hate, they sent a probe to Mars. United Arab Emirates sent the probe to mm -hmm. Mars. You know, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, you know, the, 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 the desert people, that the people, are like, they sent the probe to Mars. And how they do that? By selling us oil. So the thing of it is, is that we are never, as a nation, going to be able to live up and be number one like we think we are is because you know what we do we exclude too many people and we hurt ourselves because we are excluding so much potential that could be used to make this nation even greater this is the this is the real sin of america mm. this mm -hmm. is the real sin that we are stupid enough that this nation is stupid enough to exclude uh 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 uh, uh, uh so many people that they can't even benefit from the talents, the gifts, or anything else mm -hmm. that could really make this uh, nation number one. So yep. it's always going to be operating on three cylinders as opposed to eight. That That's right. And and then they turn around and they blame those people that they push off to the side and crush for, you know, their, their own oppression. That's, that's, no, we, we know what the game is. We, right. we understand the capitalist system in this country. And look, we 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 really appreciate you sticking in with us. We could cuss a whole lot more, but I mean, we we will never stop criticizing this system and the way capitalism and white supremacy work hand in hand 
to keep us oppressed, broke, sick, and the laughing stock of the rest of the world, which is made up of people of color who are working in solidarity to fight the capitalist imperialism, the capitalist white supremacist imperialism of the United States. We better get on board exactly. because the rest of the world is leaving us behind. That's right, Lisa. Until the system <laughs> dies, none of us will have any measures of peace. Or as my man Bain would say, <laughs> we are America's reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much y'all for joining us we appreciate you uh th if you like what you see uh here in luke mon nation please uh, consider becoming a patron you can find us on patreon uh at patreon.com slash luke mon nation l-u-q-m-a-n-n-a-t-i-o-n subscribe to us on youtube Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, Coffee Current Events and Politics in Luke Mon Nation. We will see you next week, I think, with next week. another show. Um, and if something big pops off, we're probably not going to pay that much attention to the impeachment because really, what else do we have to say about what the heck is going on? But hey, we will definitely have a regularly scheduled show, show next Wednesday, yeah. I believe at 7.30. So. Right. Uh, and until just get then, the notifications. I mean, they'll will they'll tell you. Yeah, follow us. If you follow us on all of those platforms, you'll get a notification about something. Uh, definitely check out Red Spin Sports. Our, our comrade, uh, um, uh, uh, Chris Wallace. Yep. <laughs> Shout I, out to Chris. Yeah, it's it's time for me to go to bed. It's, and love you too, Lion King. <laughs> yes, we love you, Lion King. We yep. love y'all. Thank you so much, David Silberg, David Otnis. Heather Morris, everybody, Lisa Catlett, thanks so much, y'all. Appreciate you very much. As always, be really, really good to each other. And as Chairman Fred Hampton said, I say to you, peace, if you are willing to fight for it. So y'all take care. Hey, look at our patrons. I believe the children <laughs> no, are our future. No, oh, Keep them well and oh, let them my lead God. the way. Show them all the beauty <laughs> they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children laugh. You did not do the Negro thing in the to be. I know the boss closing in. Don't you dare give up now. Hopefully, if you pull up, do some bucks down. Tied to the valley, pull the truck round. Push the line up that we drew it. It's just us now. Would you believe me if I told you my granny told me she prayed this? Then booked the surgery just to pull me out of the basement. Right back where I started, nothing to show for a facelift. Got pushed playing Walter White and Davis. Never felt so dangerous. The type of power they can't quantify. And name the best for my region. You got to utter mine.